Welcome to Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. I'm Linda and today I'm out in my garden and I am about to plant some squash, some watermelons, and some cucumbers. And I am planting them in some kitty poos. And I am going to be adding some amendments to my soil. I'm going to be adding in some topsoil because I'm using soil from last season. And so I'm going to add some amendments. I'm going to add a, one bag of topsoil to each of the kitty pools. Then I'm going to amendment, amend it with some um, Espomo plant tone. I'm also going to add in some perlite. Then I'm adding some onions and I'm planting garlic in there also. And these are what I'm calling working onions and working garlic because their job is to keep away the pest because as you know squash bugs love squash and they love it more than i do they come in and they're called squash vine boars and they get inside of your vine of your squash and they literally eat the inside out and kill your plant so I am going to be putting in some onions and some garlic in these kitty pools to try to repel them away from my squash. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my topsoil into my kitty pool with the soil that I had from last season. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some perlite to help with the drainage. And my spoons all have drainage holes already in the bottom, because as I said previously, I used these from last season. I did not grow squash in there because you don't wanna grow squash in the same place over and over. Because those uh, squash vine borers can uh, leave their eggs in there and be waiting on you in the next season. I'm going to go ahead and add some of my plant tone. You're going to have to go kind of heavy on the plant tone on your fertilizer because uh, squash are heavy feeders. So now I'm just gonna get it all mixed together. Combine really good. I'm also gonna be adding in some marigolds because marigolds have a reputation for also uh, repelling insects away from your plant. So I'm gonna add them in also.
and I don't really expect to get a large bulb of garlic or a large bulb on my onions, but whatever I do get, I will be eating because it is past the time to plant the garlic. The onions, there still, there still is a great chance for the onions because the onion time for planting onions is not uh, past yet. But the time for actually planting the garlic to get uh, big, large bulbs has passed already. So we still can get some nice onions out of this. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get our seeds. Well, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop in my marigolds. So when, then when I put my seeds in, I won't have to disturb them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop in the marigolds. And these are some Inca, and they will grow 12 to 14 inches. I purchased these today at a local nursery because I had planted marigolds, but they did not germinate. I think they were killed in the frost uh, along with a lot of my other plants. And I know marigolds, they grow quickly, but I needed these marigolds now to go ahead and start to working. So I'm gonna pop them in. I'm going to surround the plants that I'm going to put in here. And I'm putting my squash out in this area. It's on the east side. There, this area gets about six hours of sunlight each day. But the main reason I'm putting them out here is so they will be away from a lot of my other plants. I don't want to have them too close. Just in case the squash vine borers uh, tack, I don't want them to be close to my other plants and cause an infestation in my garden. But with all these things that I'm trying to do, I'm hoping that these things will help so we'll know the next season if these work because you don't want to put your plants out here and the vine borers just take over and kill your plant. That is a bad feeling. When you come out here and find that one of them has, has gotten into the vine of your plant. Hopefully these marigolds will uh, spread out and surround the plant, although the plant is going to sprawl, but I'm hoping that these marigolds put out enough of the fragrance that the uh, pests don't like, that it will keep them from munching on my squash plant. Because I'm really looking forward to some squash. I'm going to plant uh, butternut. Matter of fact, I'm going to put two plants in each one and they're going to be different plants butternut and patty pan in one yellow and i think zucchini in another and then i don't know if i i'll show you all in just a moment because i think i got them together how i want them as I said, squash are heavy feeders. You're going to have to make sure that you put in enough fertilizer to 
keep your squash fed throughout the season. Okay, those are filled with the marigolds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and break up my clothes and get some garlic in here. That smells so good. These are some large size garlic. Wow, that's one clove. I don't know, I might need to take that back in the house. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna stick them in here. These cloves are huge. Okay, that's two right there. Let me check that other one, see if that was two. That was so huge. Oh, that's one. And if you've never planted uh, garlic before, you wanna leave the paper skin on and you wanna have this pointing up. This side is your root. You can see that, that's your root. Now stick it. I'm gonna have to make sure not to plant these too deep. I think that's one of my problems when I plant garlic and onions. I think I plant them too deep. So I'm trying to keep it in mind not to plant them too deep. Really do it like, like that. Because most pests are not gonna come to your garden looking for your garlic them underneath. That can be some compost. This, this garlic skin can compost in place. Kind of surround it with some garlic. I'm gonna have to slow down on the garlic. I put a lot in there. I only got a little left for the other two. So I'm gonna have to split this up. but I think I left it inside. So we're gonna just put one, got a medium and a small here. I'm probably gonna have to go back in and get some garlic for the last one. Cause I don't wanna skip it out. I wanna make sure that there is enough to do what I'm expecting it to do. Okay, so now, let's see if I can get it. Me. Nope, we must be inside. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop in our onions. Like I said, try not to get them too deep in the soil, just get them where they can stand up and they will soon take root. I told you all, I don't uh, dig holes for my onions. I just put them, let's see. I just put them where I'm gonna put them, especially when the soil is this 
soft like this is today. Soil is soft and loomy, so you can just plop them down and put them where you want. Uh, pop them. If this were some hard soil, then you might have to dig a hole. Bought out some extra onions. I just didn't bring out the extra garlic. I'll pop in. I am ready for some squash. I like all different kinds of squash. I am, I think my favorite is probably the yellow. No, it's not. It's the patty pan is my favorite. Patty pan is my favorite. Then the yellow. And then all the rest of them, I think, kind of tie up. The butternut and all of those. But I love them all. If you have not planted any squash, or if you think you don't like squash, go ahead and give squash another try. And just try uh, preparing it different ways. Because it is a wonderful side to so many of your dishes. I love it with uh, purple hull peas and okra and have some squash and some cornbread. That is a five-star restaurant meal for me. I love that. Okay, so now I am going to put my seeds in. My, uh, I got my... Got a lot of seeds out here. Did I say I was putting in some cucumbers? <laughs> I can't remember if I said I was putting in cucumbers, but I am putting in some cucumbers. I'm gonna put this, these cucumbers out here with this squash. I'm putting in some pickling, some Boston. Well, these are national pickling cucumbers. I'm putting those in. I got some summer squash, which are my yellow squash. Then this one is a summer squash, but it's a mix. It has the um, zucchini also. Then I have my, this is one of the three color patty pan. So I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but uh, I did have a plan, but see like my plan just went, just flew out the window. Then here is a straight neck. And I don't want to put too many squashes in one container. I just want to do two. Because as I said, squashes are heavy feeder. So I'm going to have to uh, go ahead and make up my mind. This butternut, I would like to get it planted. It don't have a picture or anything, but I got butternut. And then I have a crook neck. And then I have the kush off. So we're just going to pop in. That kush, y'all, we're gonna do that. We're gonna put it in with something. Go ahead and do them right now. I'm gonna pull my gloves off so I can go ahead and pop them in. Um, I'm just gonna put in, I think I showed y'all these kush out seeds before, but these kush out seeds are big because that kush out is big. So I'm going to put in the push out. And I gotta put my favorite in, y'all. I'm gonna put two kush out. And I'm gonna put two patty pans. But what I'm gonna do, I think, is after I get my germination, if there I'll come out and I look and see which plants are the, the largest, and then I will remove the weak plant and keep the large plant. So that way I'll have room for my plants to grow. So I got a, got one, uh, I got two kush planted. Now I'm gonna put two I'm not gonna put them too deep because this seed is small. This is a patty pan and it's small. So I'm gonna uh, get my label put my label on have one for the kush and one for the patty pan. 
Doesn't matter really where I put them, as long as I know that that's what is in here. Okay, so now I've got a label made for a cook mix. Okay, I got my national cucumbers. So I'm going to put the cucumber by itself. Because I don't want to put the cucumbers in a um, squash in the same one. And that's another thing. You have to be careful when you're planting some of your uh, squashes and melons. Because some can cross-pollinate. But uh, with these, if they were to cross-pollinate, it would not happen this season. It would happen next season. Meaning it would be in the seeds. If you were to go and get the seeds, then it would be in those seeds. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the cucumbers on the end. I'm gonna pop in four cucumber seeds. I've got my cucumber. And those are national pickle cu pickling cucumbers. So I've got patty pan and kush all there. This is going to be yellow squash in that that mix that has um, zucchini in it also. I still want that uh, butternut. So, I'm putting a couple of the mix, I'm gonna put four seeds. I'm gonna put a couple of the mix and I'm gonna put a couple of the butternut. And I know that these vines are gonna sprawl all out here. So, uh, my preference would be to have these growing on a pole and I might add a tea post to these plants once they start growing and or I may not so I'm not sure but um right now I just want to go ahead and get them planted I just I feel like I'm behind and I know that uh you know, the weather has been funny and we have not been able to plant a lot of different uh, seeds or, you know, these seeds, I'm sure, would not have germinated before there is any uh, frost. I don't, I'm not expecting there to be another frost, but just in case there was, because it's so close to May, I think that these seeds would be safe. So I, I'm gonna have to put this one in because I got a little soil on it. So that was an extra butternut. And I don't want to put the soil back into my seed packet. So I'm gonna go ahead and now water the plants in. And I need to make one label for the butternut. So I bought my labels out here. Okay, I'm really anxious to get go ahead and get my um watermelons planted. But I'm going to probably put them either further down that way or next to this. I put up, make another row and put them, I don't know, because I don't want them close to the squash. So that was the butternut. Okay, so now I'm just going to give them a water in. I didn't bring the water hose out here, but I did bring my water in. It has been raining for the last two or more days. So the soil that I started them in was already saturated. 
And the topsoil that I added to them was also saturated. And I know y'all tired of hearing that I'm gonna put this irrigation system out here, but I'm going to do it. I just gotta make a trip to Lowe's to pick up the proper tubing and the part. I got some of the things, but I need to look, be in there where I can look at the, all the different uh, pieces. And so now, but I've got all that done, and I still have the marigolds left. I'm just gonna kind of secure this area with the rest of my marigolds. I'm just gonna pop some in. And boys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.